we're going to start and we have an hour booked for this and so welcome to how to avoid losing your life savings to the nursing home today this talk is sponsored by brookdale senior living and daniel Renke is here he's one of the hosts and he'll say a few words at the end but he has graciously given me the floor for the best amount of the time okay you want to say anything, Daniel? I just want, I'll just say thank you all for joining and I'll uh, answer some questions at the end. Perfect. With a little intro. Okay. We are so glad we're, you are here. We know that you're here because you're worried about losing your life savings to the nursing home uh, for you or for your loved one. You want to get good care, but you also don't want to waste any hard earned money and you don't want any extra hassles too, I would think. And especially now today with COVID-19, you're probably even more painfully aware that there's a lot we can't control, that we don't know how long we'll be healthy for and when we might get sick and exactly what will happen. These are scary and uncertain times and knowing how to plan ahead for this is really overwhelming. And it's okay to feel that way because most people do not know this information. So I'm really glad that you're here today because this is a good first step in getting a plan for how to pay for long-term care. And most people don't have that plan. And so um, we at Safe Harbor help people with this every day. We've helped lots of people like you. And our purpose is we want to help you protect what matters most. Can you switch the slide, Megan? Oh, we're okay. We're two slides back. Okay. There is my COVID slide. <laughs> We've seen too many of those images. This is uh, most of our team and that is our goal. And for situations like this, most often what matters most to you is you and getting good care, your loved ones, and your hard-earned assets. That is exactly what we're talking about today. So I'm gonna get you started on how to avoid spending all your life savings on the nursing home. And then we're gonna offer you resources in the talk to help you take the next step. And the most helpful resource we'll offer at the end, and it's a one-on-one -on -one confidential um, strategy session that's tailored just to you. In which, and I think that will be the most helpful thing. But this talk today will help you get started. So, um, next slide is good. I'm going to tell you a little story about why this is important. So, last fall, um, Emma's brother in law called. He handled her finances, he's a wonderful brother in law. He called us and he said, I am so worried about my sister, Emily. She fell and broke her hip and now she's in the nursing home. She's only 67, but we're paying $12,000 a month and we hope she gets out soon, but we really don't know. And actually at this point, she's been in for a year paying $12,000 a month. Um, and so but I don't know what to do, but she doesn't have much money left and we want to get on medical assistance and we really need help. So Emily and her brother decided to hire us it was really Emily's decision, but he does a lot of the work for her. And um, so we started making a plan for her. And I met with them, sweetest family. And I, we asked for a bunch of information. When I started looking at all the documentation that medical assistance looks at, because they look back five years at what you've done, they had sold a family home. The parents left the family home to em Emily and her siblings, and they had sold it like a year before. Well, I found something in the documents. They didn't have an elder law point attorney at that point, and they got some bad advice from a title company, and they otherwise did things that make perfect common sense in normal life, but for medical assistance, it does not follow their rules. And because they were in a five-year look-back period, the rules changed in the middle of the game, and they were in trouble. What happened when we applied was that medical assistance gave them a penalty of $90,000. That, that's what it cost them to not have good advice back then. So that meant 
Emma, um, we're not going to pay a dime until you pay $90,000 of your care. Well, of course, she had $3,000 left. That's how much you get to have if you're single and you go on medical assistance. And as Bob said to me, like, I can't look, take $90,000 out of my retirement, me and my wife, and pay for it. Well, you know, what are we going to do? The facility, great facility, actually, in White Bear Lake, um, they, they're in a bad spot. That case is on appeal. It's been um, since February, I think the decision came out. We don't know how it's going to go. I do not want you or any of my clients to be in the situation that Emily and her family is in. It's very difficult and stressful. And she, it's very real possibility she could get kicked out of the facility she's in. So far they haven't, but that's why I created the smooth sailing system. I call this one asset protection because we're protecting your assets from the nursing home, but it's really also about care. So if you do the asset protection system with us, you can have a much better result than Emily. So here's a testimonial from a client. Um, this is actually a wonderful grandson of one of our clients. And he would just said, safe harbor is what the name says. Just a quick phone call made me feel like there's hope in getting everything in my grandmother's organized and taken care of. He had all his questions answered. He had more knowledge than a Google search. Isn't that great? We're better than a Google search. <laughs> I mean, I hope we are. And uh, yeah, we worked with him several times. She actually passed away recently. But um, planning can give you peace of mind and protect your assets and your loved ones and get you better care. So that's why I am really excited that you are here. And so this slide is just a little bit about my qualifications. And by the way, afterward, you'll get an email with these slides in it and a link to the talk, okay? Because I know I'm throwing a lot at you right now. Um, so I just want you to know, not only do I have training and skills in this area, I have personal experience, which I think is the most important. So my dad passed away January 2019 of dementia, and my siblings and I, there's eight of us, we work together to support my parents, and now we're working together to support my mom, who's I just saw for the first time in three months in person on Monday. I got to sit on a park bench with her. But I understand the fears, the confusion, the questions that come up, the family dynamics, the whole thing. And I, it's really my honor to help other people in the same boat. And so the next slide is really about my credentials, about some elder law um, involvement that I have in the community. Oh, there's my mom and dad. <laughs> so um, that's my mom and dad at my wedding that I got married to. Um, and then there's a slide about my credentials that I won't really spend time on, but you can read that uh, when you get it later. And it's also on the website. So I'm involved in the elder law community and uh, just honored to be part of the, the team. So now we're going to dive in and tell you what we're going to go over today. We're going to talk about ways to pay for long term care. And then there's gonna be time for questions. Like I said, you can put them in the chat in the meantime, and if it works, I'll answer them. If it works into the talk, otherwise I'll hold them till then. So keep your questions, write them down if you need to. Um, and then we're gonna offer you a few resources. There's gonna be a spreadsheet uh, I'll tell you about. There's gonna be a, another video from when I was on cable TV, and then um, that personal meeting, that strategy session that I told you about that probably is gonna be the most helpful. But we just try to offer a variety so we can meet you where you are at today. So how do you pay for long-term care? We all know it's expensive. It costs um, easily $120,000 a year. If you're married, a married couple could go through $500,000 in a couple of years pretty quickly. Uh, I just read that if you're 65 or over, there's like a 70% chance you'll need long-term care. Um, and so it's really something we all need to think about and, uh, we need to plan ahead. And so that's why we're doing it today. 
Oh, I, I know what else I wanted to tell you. So women are usually in for an average of one to, or men for an average of one to two years and women for like three to four years. I mean, some people are in for 10 years. So it can really add up. So we want to hope for the best and plan for the worst. That's my motto. So the first way to pay is private pay. And I think this is really a funny slide because <laughs> it's like, hey, who wants to pay for the nursing home? Me, me. Like, that's not really how it is. <laughs> but it's expensive. There's pros because you have more options. You know, you can have top of the line. You, you know, you don't have to worry about following all these Medicaid rules. Um, and so while you can do that, private pay can be nice. That's the first the bottom line, and that's what the government expects you to do, use your money first. Secondly, you might have long-term care insurance. And if you have long-term care insurance, if you would like to just say yes or no in the chat, that would help me just kind of know um, who, how many of you have it. So long-term care insurance is helpful, but this is what I want to say. It doesn't mean that, that you're done with planning. I have a lot, thank you, Valerie. I have a lot of um, clients who have long-term care, but depends on what the policy says, depends on how long it is. They often have many exceptions. Um, it's very helpful, it's good. If you don't have it, don't despair. If you do have it, don't assume you don't need to do this planning, because you should. So thank you for your responses. I love that you're finding the chat. Okay, so private pay and long-term care insurance. Those are great to have. Most of you guys don't have it, a couple people do. Okay, right, totally okay. There is a new product with long-term care insurance that you can get whole life insurance with long-term care in it, so that if you don't use it and die, your family still gets money. Um, so you might look into it, but um, it also might be not the best time for you if you're, if you're not older or not completely healthy. So the next way to pay when you run out of money is government benefits. So many people think Medicare pays for long-term care, but the main payer of long-term care in the country is really medical assistance. Medicare pays about 90 days. Um, and so like if you break your hip and then you're in hospital and then you're in rehab, they're probably gonna pay for that. But if you end up going to the nursing home after that, you're, you're probably starting to run out of Medicare. And then you, um, then you go on medical assistance. Medical assistance is a combination between state and federal programs. It's administered by the states. In Minnesota, it's administered by the county. And Minnesota, Medicaid is the national name. Medical assistance is the Minnesota name. So Medicaid is Minnesota medical assistance, same thing. I call it MA. So MA is what you want to pay probably uh, if you don't wanna use all your own money. And then, of course, there's the VA, Veterans Benefits. And um, so most of our clients don't use Veterans Benefits. If you want to go in their nursing home, there's a one to two year waiting list. So a lot of times what I find with my clients is we end up using medical assistance anyway. But there are some good benefits my mom had with um, Veterans Benefits, like house cleaning and respite care and having showers for my dad and stuff like that. There are some other benefits. Um, but mainly medical assistance. So the rest of the talk will focus on medical assistance. So um, medical assistance, you can probably go to the next slide there, Megan. Um, medical assistance, there's two long-term care ways, two ways to pay for long-term care if you're over 65. And that's really all I'm talking about. There's different programs for people under 65. And we know all about those, we help people with those, but today it's over 65. MA long-term care is traditional. It means nursing home. Okay, that's the MA that's kind of always been there. Elderly waiver is newer. I've still been around for a while, but this will pay for care in your home. You could be in assisted living, you could be in a private home, you could be in an apartment, you could be in memory care, and you would be on elderly waiver. It's still medical assistance, the rules are really similar, not identical, but for our talk today, they, it's essentially the same for the rules. So either way, whether it's EW or MA, that's what we're talking about for people over 65. 
<clears throat> okay, this, the time to plan is now. The reason I'm saying this, like I mentioned with Emily's story, this, there is a five year look back when you apply for medical assistance. So there's complicated rules. You don't know what they are. <laughs> um, they're not intuitive. They're not easy to figure out. They're kind of in some ways contrary to how you've lived your life and handled your money. And then when you apply, there's questions about what you've done in the last 60 months. Like if you sold a house in the last 60 months, they want all the documentation about how you sold it, where all the money went. Uh, they want to know if you made any gifts in the last five years, charity, family, Christmas, whatever. They, they want to know the 60 months they can go back because they assume and legally they can assume that anything you did in those prior 60 months, you were doing it to try to get Medicaid to play, pay instead of you. So what we want to do <laughs> in those five years before is follow their rules. And there are ways to do it, to protect your money and follow the rules so that you can still get on medical assistance without a big hassle. So that's why I say plan ahead. If it's like more than five years, that's wonderful. But two years is better than, uh, than less than two years. So anytime, uh, anytime that's seven years or less would be good. So I'm gonna tell you another story about a client who did, who did plan and um, his, let's say his name is Gordon. <laughs> These are uh, changed names that I use. He is a wonderful man. He had a stroke. He was about 60. And um, he was strong like this. And, um, but he ended up, by the time I met him, in a wheelchair, difficulty talking, still a sharp brain, but was going to need care the rest of his life. And I'll never forget, his son came, St. Paul firefighter, strong young man, like cried through most of the meeting because he just, his dad, he never saw him like this. So we had this wonderful family, sister, son, um, and him, and his sister was the one who called me in the first place. And so we had to help him with a number of things in planning to get on medical assistance because they had this crisis, a stroke, and now they didn't know what to do. And so uh, we helped him. In fact, he had been separated from his wife for about 25 years, and she lived in Canada. So one thing we had to help him do was get divorced. Otherwise, she would have had to pay for his care, and he didn't want to stick her with that. Um, so that was a little aside. But the next thing that we did was, okay, let's look at your money and how can we protect it? So you can do the next slide, Megan. So he had about $600,000. And so if he didn't come to us, he was going to pay the $600 to the care provider, that little box there, that little house. It, for him, it is a nursing home. Um, and then when it was gone, when he had only 3000 left, then the state would start paying. So that saved the state $600,000 basically. And that's, that's the plan. And then even if you do that though, and you don't talk to an elder law attorney ahead of time, uh, you might not get on medical assistance if you don't follow the rules. So, so there's a risk he maybe didn't get on medical assistance and all the other money, all his money would have went to the nursing home. But he did have this strategy session with us that we're gonna offer you at the end and he went ahead and did an asset protection plan. So his results look more like this. He saved, he, he really saved over half of his money. So um, if you can see this pie here, there's about 250,000 going to the nursing home and the state is, is paying more of that. Uh, so, so what we did, there's a couple little strategies that saved him some money, like prepaying your funeral, always important to do before you go on medical assistance, and nice to do for your family anyway. There's a couple other strategies. Uh, we work through each family and figure out what makes sense. Maybe you're paying your loved ones for care. Maybe you're buying a car. Maybe there, there's different things you can buy. Sometimes real estate is involved. But if you see the really big strategy here on the left, that annuity for 290000 he gave 290000 to his son. He had that trusted son and that son is keeping that money and he's holding it so that if Gordon needs it during his life, he has it. But um, in the meantime, uh, it's protected and it may end up going to his son when he dies. Probably most of it will to tell you the truth. And then on the right, the green part, he, oh, I'm saying it backward. I'm so sorry. <laughs> See, it's complicated. 
All right. On the right, he made the gift to his son, 250000 Okay, that's the gift to his son. On the left, the annuity, 290000 We bought a Medicaid-compliant annuity. These are pretty new in Minnesota. They've only been allowed for about five, six years. Minnesota Medicaid is so stringent. We can't really do irrevocable trust the way other people do. We couldn't do these annuities right away, but there was a court case called Gaston, and DHS now allows us to do these. And so this makes a huge difference. It is a game changer. So we bought the annuity, we made the gift, we went on medical assistance. They said, did you make any gifts in the last six, 60 months? Yes, last week we gave 250,000 to his son. Well, you're gonna have a penalty. You know, just like Emily had a penalty, but we were ready for the penalty. You have a $290,000 penalty. Oh yeah, we know. We already bought an annuity. It's going to pay for his care while the penalty period is going. It's all set up and it actually will finish next month. It's been about two years. It, we've been paying this off. It's going really well, checking with the family regularly. The son still got the 250,000. Um, the facility's happy. They've been getting paid private pay for the last couple of years. And, and we've satisfied the government rules. I know that's complicated. I know you didn't remember it all. So let's go to the next slide. And I have some, just some takeaways about what, what I would like you to remember. First of all, Medicaid compliant annuities are the new game changer in town. You could save over half your assets with a properly done plan and still get good care. The sooner you plan, the better. And you're gonna save more than you spend on the smooth sailing plan, I mean, he saved way more. Most of our clients save way more. Um, it depends on your situation, and we'll help you figure out what's best for you. And last, our complimentary strategy session we're, we're offering at the end, it'll help us help you understand, you know, if you're at a place where we could help you with this. Okay, so that's it. There's game changers, there's new rules, it'll be worth your money, and it saves, um, hassle on time and gets you good care. Now, I, want, I just want to tell you about something a lot of people are surprised. It's called estate recovery. So if you've been, or your wife or husband have been on medical assistance and then they die, or it could be anyone actually, it, doesn't, it could be your, your uncle or whatever. After a medical assistance recipient dies, the state tries to collect from you the money from the estate. And so if you only have... $3,000, they still try to collect it from you. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if you have a house, they're gonna put a lien on your house. So it, everything's just not free and clear. And we know the rules and we help you with them and we plan ahead for you. So don't be surprised, but that's part of the things that we need to think about. But we do the thinking for you, <laughs> uh, so you don't have to worry about it all. But that's just a little trick surprise that can really, come at a really difficult time when you're dealing with your loved one. So at this point, I just want to say, it's not a do-it-yourself project. Remember what happened to Emily in the house, the $90,000 penalty, okay? Um, and um, yeah, it, that's what I mean. It, it would have cost not very much to do a plan then and get some good advice. and. And then that house could have been sold really in a proper way. And uh, what, the saddest thing was that family was actually gifting their, the, the siblings gifted their share of the house to Emily. And then she got a penalty bigger than that. It, it was just terrible. And we see other cases like that. So I would say it just is not the kind of do-it-yourself project at all. Very complex area of the law. A lot of attorneys don't do this area because of that. But we right, there's some questions. I wonder if we should address those. So I can go back to the slide or um, should wait. Let me just do this and then we'll do that because it's right after okay. here, right? I saw them too. Then, but we will go back to the slide. So let's do this. Um, they're not, they're not simple and quick questions. <laughs> so, and uh, okay. This is what I want you to think about right now. And then we'll go over those annuity questions. Always get some annuity questions. Um, if you have any of these concerns, check the box, you know, I guess you'll have to check it in your head, paper in front of you, but if you're worried about running out of money for your care or loved one's care, if you don't want all your money to go to the nursing home, maybe you made gifts in the past or your loved one made gifts in the past, 
very common problem. Nothing wrong with that, but we have to fix it for medical assistance. And I want to learn more about paying for long-term care. Any of those, then, um, then it would be good for you to take next steps after this talk. And so next, I'm going to tell you a couple action steps that you could take to get just the next step, okay? These are free. All of these steps today are free. So request the asset summary. So one of the first things we do, you know, like when Gordon came to us or Emily's brother came to us, we're like, we need a summary of what your assets are. Like we need to really know like what you have. And so we have a form we use and we'd be happy to send it to you. It's a spreadsheet. You could print it out and write on it or you could type in it, whatever you like. And then you can start making a list of like, what do I really have? Who owns it? Who's on the title? Who? And that is a really good place to get started actually. Um, and then the next thing is, I was on Mary Hansen's cable TV show. It's the longest running cable TV show in the country. It goes all over the country. And um, we have a video, elder video, you know, different but similar topics. So you might find it helpful. And plus, I always say, Mary talks slow. I know I talk really fast, <laughs> so she slows me down. So that's, those are two options for you. And um, Megan, are you just going to send those? They don't need to ask for them, right, on a webinar? Yeah. Yep, I'll send everyone an email with the resources and then a copy of the slides. Got it. Let us know if you have any questions or problems with them. So you'll just get them automatically. <laughs> but if you uh, checked any of those boxes, then they should probably be helpful to you. And then again, I'll, I'll talk about the strategy session later. That is really probably the best thing for you. So now let's go to the questions and I will start with what's in the chat. Thank you for asking the questions and we might, okay, this is the annuity. I forgot, oh, Sherry, right? Claypool? Is that right, Megan? Yes, yes. Sherry. Okay. As long as the annuity penalty was set up, the gift of 250K cannot be touched. What if they need to apply for MA during the look back period? Does that 250 need to be given back? Okay. Okay. I know this is confusing, Sherry, um, and everybody. Um, so what happens is you don't apply for MA during the look back period because MA, once you apply, that creates the look back period. Okay. So, so that, that there's that question. So what happens is let's say if you're applying in June this month, we have to apply by the end of June. So we'd be like, okay, we're going to make the gift Friday and we're going to buy the annuity Monday and we're going to apply by Wednesday. We do it all together really. So then, yeah, medical assistance can't touch the 250K gift because you paid the penalty. If you paid the penalty, that's all you got to do. In real life, the gift is used. Um, there's a little bit of money that the son, Gordon's son, has been paying every month except February because you pay by the day in a facility and February is the short month. So every month they pay a little bit for one or two days or whatever. Now, if Gordon wants to move to a new facility, if there's new management or, oh, you know, he wants to be closer to his son or something like that, a lot of times you have to private pay for a year or two. Well, then we could use the 250 k for that. Normally, it's going to be used a little bit. Or how about this? We buy an annuity to pay for Gordon's care at $10,000 a month. If it goes up to $12,000 a month, the extra $2,000 comes out of the pot. So it's really important to have somebody who is going to look out for my client. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that happens or we're not doing this gift. I hope that helped you, Sherry. I think the, um, um, it really takes more getting further into the asset protection process before people understand this better. So this is an introduction. John asked, are the assets, oh my gosh, Sherry said it made sense. Excuse me. Oh, <laughs> that's great. Okay. John, are the assets payments prior to MA specific to the person getting care or the joint entity in a married couple? Oh, John, I'm not, can we unmute John, Megan? I'm not sure. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Are you, John, are you talking about in an annuity situation? So, so the, your example for the 600K, was mm -hmm. that specific to that one individual? Yeah. Or as a married couple, would it apply to the entire couple? Would that 600K be that married couple? 
Yes, we've done this with married couples too. So what, what's different is an individual gets to keep 3,000, a married couple gets to keep about 127,000, 130,000 actually. So they get to keep more. Um, you can still do the annuity gift. And um, there's another thing, I, I didn't put this on the slides because it's, but since you guys are sort of high level, I'll tell you and just ignore if it's too much. You can also use an annuity to give more assets more income to the spouse. So I had a couple last fall, elderly, they were ready to apply pretty much except they had like $30,000 too much. So we bought an annuity for $30,000. It pays the wife income over like six months. So they got down to 130,000, we applied. They ignore these Medicaid compliant annuities. They're, they're like blind to them, they don't count. And so um, now she's been getting that income and she can keep it in the bank. So now they're over 130,000, but it's allowed. So it, there's even an extra thing for married couples. It can work even better. But I also did this for a married couple in the last year. We did a trust, um, put $400,000 in a trust for um, their kids with this in mind. And they might never apply actually, but there's a variety of things we can do with it. Does that answer your question, John? It does. Thank you. Any other questions? You can she, can you unmute everybody, Megan, and see if that works? If there's not too much feedback. I know chat isn't easy for everybody, and you might be on an iPad and can't type. All right, can you unmute, Megan? I'm unmuting people. People can unmute themselves too if they have oh, a question. Okay, you're just doing it one by one, thank you. Can you unmute Bob? I know he was. He said he couldn't do chat. <laughs> I think we lost Bob. Oh, okay. I don't see him. Okay, I'm just giving a little more time. Otherwise, I do have one other question that uh, people tend to ask about and then um, which might get at Paula's question at the beginning. Okay, well, let's go um, to the next slide, Megan. This is a common question I wanted to put in here if we had time. Um, asset protection trust limited value in Minnesota. That's what it says, okay? So you might hear in other states that people go, well, you just throw it in an, your money in an asset protection trust. And a lot of times you still have to follow the look back period. But let's say you're, you know, you're healthy and you think you won't apply for at least five years and you come to me and say, well, I just want to put, a, you know, half my money in a trust and just leave it there. Irrevocable trust, they're called. And then um, when you apply for medical assistance, medical assistance ignores it and pretends it isn't there. Well, no, you can't do that, Minnesota. That's the short answer. I mean, um, a lot of attorneys will just tell you we absolutely won't do them. We do do them from time to time um, for the right client, but um, you can expect a fight for medical assistance because they're still opposing these. And there's one Minnesota case that uh, ruled against the Department of Human Services. We do feel their position is unconstitutional and if I had a client who wanted one of these, I'd be happy to do it because I think we would win that case. <laughs> but the risk is, you know, if you end up applying and medical assistance denies the existence of this trust and wants the money, and then we appeal and we go to court and, you know, yeah, we're figuring 20, 30,000 of legal fees. So, um, you know, we have done them a little bit. Uh, I, I actually talked about one earlier, but they don't work so slick like in other states. In our state, the annuity is slicker. Oh, what documentation do you need to provide at the time of application? Do you need five years of bank statements? Nope, you don't just give them five years of bank statements. That's a good question. What we try to do is present um, the minimum amount and present it in the right way. Like we know how to present things and how to say to them. <laughs> and so you disclose gifts, you make statements. Like for instance, if you give um, $100 a week to a church and like that's, that's a lot in a year. So, but we'll put $100 a week 
instead of the whole yearly total or like birthday and Christmas list, we'll say $50 for each kid and child at birthday or Christmas instead of the whole dollar amount. I, and we just present it in a way that's most favorable to you, but honest. Um, and then, so what we find is people are not, they're not as picky with our clients and they don't come back and ask for five years of statements very often. Uh, but they usually will ask for a few more questions and then uh, it kind of depends how it goes. With annuities, they tend to ask for more stuff because you know, you're obviously legally getting away with something and um, they're, they look at them a little closer. So we're careful with those. Um, we have a list that we ask you for when you hire us for medical assistance application. These are the things we need. And if you sold the house in the last five years, we need that information. But otherwise it's mostly current bank statements. Okay, so let's move on because we know you probably have some personal questions, maybe questions you don't want to ask right now. Um, and you, know, you might just be so overwhelmed you don't even know what to ask. So we totally understand that. So how do you move from being stressed out and overwhelmed, which is the normal condition that people come to us in, to like having your ducks in a row and having some peace of mind? This is the strategy session that we recommend. That's our office, which is open. We have plexiglass dividers. We are doing most of our meetings on Zoom. Um, and we work with the client and what works best for you on that. But it, most people are liking Zoom or maybe even a phone call, but you can come in and meet. And Megan is the person that you meet with for this first meeting. And she does a fantastic job. It's complimentary, it's focused on you, it's con confidential because we do kind of need to know some questions about your health and your finances and this and that. And we can tell you, work with you like, are you in a good position where it's probably a good idea to do an asset protection plan? That's what we call our smooth sailing plan for this. Um, or maybe not, maybe you come back later or whatever. Um, and get those basic questions answered um, we can't, of course, in this first meeting, dive deep, <laughs> um, but we, people find it really helpful and we can help you get to the next step. So because you took the time to watch this, uh, we really appreciate that and are honored by your time. And I hope that you got value out of it, whether you come to the strategy session or not. I mean, that is our goal. We want to be helpful and educate people about this area that most people do not know about. Um, so we appreciate that. But a really great next step would be to schedule. And oh, you can go back there. Sorry, because I, I <laughs> um, it's hard because we know we're not in the same room. <laughs> but um, that safeharborestatelaw.com slash schedule. So that's our website, slash schedule. That gets you to Megan's schedule. And you can schedule a strategy session with her. And she's set aside some times on there for you so that you can come in soon. What we have found is the sooner you talk to Megan after this call, the better for you because you'll remember more, okay, and be less overwhelmed and just kind of build on what we did today. You're way ahead of most people already. So, yep, asset protection strategy session, that's what it's called. So that is the most helpful thing that we can offer to you today. And um, so... <laughs> Oh, I'll, okay, I'll just answer one more question here. Then I have my closing story and then I'll give Dan uh, whatever time Dan wants. Um, oh, there's two questions. Okay, Michelle, Shelley, what is the penalty in the annuity plan? Okay, if you made a $250,000 gift, I'm, I'm just going to um, do this on my, my phone here, my calculator, I'll tell you. That's what I do when I'm with clients. If we make a $250,000 gift, they're gonna divide that by the current maximum they pay, which is 7960. But this is change, this number's changing a little bit June, July 1st. It's gonna be 8,000 something, I don't know it yet, because it didn't happen yet. Um, so that's 31 months. So they'll go, okay, you have a penalty 31 months. That's how long the penalty is. So we know ahead of time what the penalty's gonna be. And then basically, if your cost of care is over 7960, then the annuity is going to be smaller than the gift. If your cost of care is under 70, the gift is going to be way bigger. So it is a complicated calculation, but we work it all out. 
So then Sherry Claypool, this is the day for Sherry's and Shelly's. Okay, my next question comes from the clients and consumers that work with as a social worker. Okay, there's a married couple's home. One of them is the nursing home and the other lives in the house. Yep, no problem with that. If they sell their home, can the state have access to the funds from the sale of the home? The short answer would be yes. You could, um, you know, you could buy another home and they're going to put a lien on the home. Don't forget that because of a state recovery. Uh, our website is not working, Megan. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's working when I pull it up. So I'm not, okay, I'm I just sorry, pulled John, it up. Maybe try again. Plus uh, you can always call. John, I can email you like a, my Calendly link too. That might be easier. I'm not sure. Yeah, Megan will email everyone her Calendly link. It's a link to the same page, basically. They're all uh, in the chat. Hmm? I'll put it in the chat. Okay. Alrighty. So the closing story, um, this is a fun story from about 40 years ago. No, now it's about 45 years ago, actually. Um, my sister and I were canoeing out at like Lake Rebecca. So my family, my, you know, my parents, they were the salt of the earth, wonderful parents, eight kids. We had this little tent trailer pulled behind the station wagon. That's how we camped on vacation. So we're out there camping. We always had our yellow canoe, just like that. And um, my sister and I, we had some experience canoeing. So we were fairly confident, maybe too confident. So we took out across this lake and this is a nature area. Like there's a dock, but that's it. This rest is wetland. And so we're paddling across and it's a beautiful day and it's going great. We're like, let's go all the way. So we went all the way across. And then we turned around and we found out why it was so easy, you know, because the wind was at our backs and we're like, oh, also to make it worse, a big storm was coming up. I mean, we could really see these clouds moving in when we turned around and it was a fast moving storm and it looked like we were going to get hit with the rain. So we were really scared. So the trip back was very different. We're like paddling hard. We're trying to keep it straight, but the wind's blowing it. I don't know how to swim. I still don't know how to swim. That's my confession. I always wear a life jacket, but like I was really scared that we'd get dumped over and then we'd try to right this canoe and be out in a storm and it was scary. So I, I mean, I was tense. My chest was tight, you know, and then I look back at my sister cause she's older. So she's, you know, driving it in the back and she looked scared too. So then I got more scared and I just, you can put this in the chat if you want, but what do families do? when they're stressed out and they don't know what to do. Well, we started arguing, of course. So <laughs> it was just really stressful. I mean, I still remember it today, but we made it to the other side and we got there before the storm like totally broke out and we didn't tip over. And uh, so it was good, but I learned from that. Okay. That I plan ahead. I watch the weather more I think ahead. And um, I haven't been in that similar situation since then. So I know that you don't want to be in that situation like we had coming back. You want to have a situation like going out because there's storms that come in life. There's rough waters that come. We know that, but planning can help. I want you to be able to lay your pillow, your head, I mean, on the pillow at night and have peace of mind knowing you maybe you don't know what's coming or when, but you know what you've done, what you can to protect yourself and your loved ones and your hard-earned money. So thank you again for being here today. And um, I want to thank Daniel for inviting us to be part of this and initiating this. And I've uh, really enjoyed getting to know him a bit. And I know the facility is very nice. And um, I'll just turn it over to you, Daniel. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Margaret and Megan. Um, I just want to say to everyone who's still on, I have, um, come across a few families that have worked with Margaret and I have heard nothing but good about her. So um, a lot of good feedback from anyone that uh, I've talked to that has worked with her before. A um, little bit about, about, about uh, Brookdale North Oaks. If you don't know about us, I do know a few of you on here, um, but we are specifically a uh, dementia care community. Uh, we're just one level and that's all we focus on. Uh, my information's there. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but if you have any questions, feel free to reach out or else I'll turn it back to, uh, to you, Margaret. Well, thank you.
<laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay, there we go. All right, that's our phone number and just a list of some other fun things we do, <laughs> other ways we help people protect what matters most. So we can hang on for a little bit longer for some questions. We have a few more minutes left in our hour. Megan will send you resources by email. We'd love to talk to you more. If you haven't seen Brookdale and you think it's a possibility for you or your loved ones, you know, I encourage you to talk to Daniel about that. 